Hello and welcome to this special broadcast. I'm Nitin Gokhale and I'm bringing to you a brand new digital platform and a YouTube channel. It's called interstellar.news. It's going to focus more on the Indian space industry and of course technologies that are now emerging. And with me today in the studio is uh, the editor of Interstellar.news, Dr. Chaitanya Nagari. And uh, joining us uh, from Hyderabad and Bangalore are two stalwarts of the Indian space industry. Dr. Subbarao Pavlari, uh, the German Managing Director of Anand Technologies Limited, based in Hyderabad. But of course, someone who has uh, facilities uh, elsewhere, uh, particularly in uh, Bangalore and uh, then uh, also uh, in other places. And uh, Dr. Devakar, uh, who is uh, formerly an ISRO uh, scientist and also now a research scholar at the National Institute of Advanced Studies in Bangalore. But uh, if I could start with Dr. Subbarao, uh, Dr. Subbarao, you've been watching, uh, been in this uh, space sector for more than uh, three, three and a half decades. Uh, how do you see the current status of this sector? Uh, and uh, what are the prospects for the private sector in the Indian space industry? If I can begin with that uh, question to you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Nitin, for your introduction and the beautiful questions to begin with. We are Indian space industries now in exciting times. With the reforms announced by Government of India and uh, the Space Act being the, around the corner, with this, the Indian entrepreneurship is being unleashed in the sense that the Indian entrepreneurship will grow in in exponential way in the country. The other day from defense sector, there were 75 challenges have been announced and the the response from Indian industry is very, very over healing. And the, similarly, in the space sector, the government of India again, ISRW announced another 100 challenges. The response, I'm sure, is going to be very, very encouraging. This only means that Indian entrepreneurship is going to bloom further and the Indian industry will grow to be the global industry in space sector. Oh, that's uh, very, very encouraging to know. Uh, and, uh, you know, you are going to play one of the uh, pioneering roles there. But Dr. Devakar, if I can come to you, and uh, Chaitanya is here, of course. Uh, you've been uh, with ISRO for a long time, and now you are leading the uh, research at the uh, in the space sector in the NIS. Uh, what is your uh, thought process uh, looking ahead at the Indian uh, space industry and uh, what uh, now is being described as uh, the new frontier? for uh, the Indian uh, space sector that is being opened up. Your thoughts? Yeah, thank you very much, Nitin, for uh, having me for this particular discussion. Uh, I fully agree with uh, what uh, Mr. Subarao just now said. Uh, we are in for uh, uh, very good things to, uh, things to be happening uh, in the near future, uh, particularly the kind of uh, facilitation that has been given uh, in terms of uh, the reforms that has been done by the government. Uh, there is a uh, there is a very good opening uh, for the private sector uh, to showcase its talents uh, in space sector, which uh, has not been so uh, uh, what do you, what do you call uh, open all these years. Even though uh, the private sector has been functioning and working uh, alongside with uh, ISRO in various missions, be it in the launch vehicle area, be it in the satellites, and be it in the applications. All these areas, a lot of work has been done by the uh, private industry in a big way. Uh, but uh, here is an opportunity now where the private sector will be able to uh, not only work with this row, but at the same time, do a lot of things independently also. Yes, yes. No, you're right. Absolutely, Dr. Devagar. Dr. Subara, uh, uh, since uh, the uh, space reforms are uh, now the new mantra, uh, do you think uh, the Indian space sector also needs, uh, like the other sectors of, say, insurance, electricity, uh, or even stock markets, where there are regulators uh, for uh, this uh, for particular sectors? Do you think uh, there has to be a separate body uh, which can regulate the uh, rules and uh, you know the uh, uh, regulations for the space sector going forward, which will enable the industry to work with government? 
work with uh, even foreign players. Uh, what is your view on that? Yes, well, in answer to the space reforms, Government of India clearly said that the ISR will be responsible for research and development, which means something like the planetary missions and you know various other research and development activities in that regard. And the private industry will look after completely on the operationalization of the space sector, which means is that wherever the repetitive activities to be done. Wherever it has to be, the space sector has to be monetized for the welfare of the people of India. That has that responsibility has to be shouldered by the private sector. Now, at the same time, the government of India also has created certain governmental undertakings for the space sector. Now, in order to take care of the activities between the government sector and also private sector and also various other. Uh, stakeholders in this. A regulator is a must. Like, you see that I, I draw the parallel from the financial sectors, where a SEBI has been the regulator. Then for the telecommunications sector, there's a TRI, there's a regulator. This will, will take care of the, the kind of a, the, the regulations that will enforce and also to encourage the industry in a similar way. And in space has been formed in Department of Space as a regulator. And we expect the in space to regulate the activities in such a way that there is no conflict of interest and also there is a level playing field between the industries in the country, either be either the governmental industries or it can be related to the private industries in that. So that also not only that, they also will encourage, they also create various ways and means of encouraging the industry to grow into the global industry. So, therefore, the regulator has a lot of activity to, to, to do in order to encourage the entrepreneurship in the space sector in this country. We welcome that. Thank you. That, that, that's wonderful to know. Dr. Divagar, uh, taking off from there, one of the uh, concerns expressed uh, by a lot of people when I speak to uh, entrepreneurs and even scientists is uh, the fact that uh, since this is a new uh, green field area, uh, and it's opening up for private sector. Is there enough talent to uh, meet uh, the new challenges that are coming forward? Uh, is there enough uh, skills uh, there which can be applied to various uh, applications that are required in the space sector, launch vehicles, satellite, uh, space applications? Uh, what is your experience? And now, now that you've switched over from uh, being ISRO to being in academics, uh, do you think uh, there is enough talent or do you think the talent needs to be nurtured? Dr. Devagar. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, uh, that's an important area now we need to really address uh, as far as uh, India and the new reforms uh, to be energized in the country is uh, concerned. Uh, it is very much necessary that we need to have the industry uh, taking an upper hand with respect to the operationalization of various uh, space sector related activities. Uh, I do feel that there is a tremendous amount of talent that exists in the country. Uh, Either it is in the area of uh, uh, launch vehicle or in the area of uh, spacecraft ups and also the applications because there are many startups which are showing keen interest uh, in this particular field. And of course, Subara himself is uh, coming up in a big way with respect to various areas of uh, usage of uh, space technology. But for a vast country like India, I think it is not good enough. We need to have a lot more industries shipping in and coming forward and taking up uh, challenging tasks ahead. Uh, because as you know very well, over a period of time, uh, ISRO has mastered the technology of uh, launch vehicle as well as spacecrafts and has demonstrated various capabilities. Now, these capabilities, uh, if we have to really operationalize them, many of these capabilities, we need challenging areas to be taken up by the private industry. And I think we have to encourage more and more industries to take up different sectors uh, of uh, space uh, related activities it could be uh, it could be any of these activities it could be space exploration it could be uh, for example even uh, the space debris related uh, issues it could be many of the activities uh, which needs uh, a lot of interest to be shown from the private industry, which I'm sure uh, uh, we will be able to encourage. In fact, ISRO is in such a position that it would surely encourage a lot of startups 
and private industries to work along with with itself and share some of these technologies so that they will be able to take it forward commercialize it and at the same time even go global uh, with respect to helping many other countries uh, who would possibly not have exposure to these technology so there is a, a tremendous opportunity in the space sector today uh, for the private industries that's what i think yeah so oh, that that's again very good to know very encouraging to know so thank you very much both of you for your time uh, we are launching uh, the uh, new digital platform as i said uh, the uh, interstellar.news with this conversation and uh, your good wishes your support uh, is something that we look forward to as we embark on this uh, new journey uh, beyond uh, the uh, clouds and of course uh, rooted firmly on the ground so uh, thanks very much for your time we'll keep coming back to you for your advice and your inputs uh, as we go along thank you thank you all the best to you nitin you want to add something for what dr devakar said i can yes sir yes sir please go ahead go ahead dr subaro oh yeah so since you mentioned about the talent in fact india has a good amount of talent in the space sector thanks to isro which has created this over last 75 years or last 50 years of you know its establishment in that area and as you know in the launch vehicle area satellite area and also in the applications area most of the industries have been trained and they have been contributing immensely to launch vehicle area satellite area and applications area again thanks to isro this happened over a period of time with the active participation from the isro encouraging the indian industry in this regard and you must look at the indian isro budget isro budget 80% of that is goes back to industry which means the space sector isro has nurtured the enough of industries in this sector already now that's how the entire that the good talent has been already created but since once once it is liberalized in this the sector has been liberalized in fact this going to be very many applications very many launch vehicles very many satellites are going to be around the corner that requires much more talent so in order to get much more talent again i thanks to isro he started the you know in many training centers in the various state government departments in the universities and also it has his own irst that you know that's something related to the training in driven itself on that so that we already entire ecosystem has been built by isro now it is for us to take this one further i'm sure india will emerge as the largest or oh, contributor for the global space sector very soon with this part and thanks that you have enough of talent talent will further grow thank you yes i indeed and we hope that uh, we will be able to provide the platform to uh, publicize and also spread the word about the indian space industry going forward and thank you very much as i said to both of you for being the first guests on our uh, youtube channel and the first interview that we have done with uh, the space uh, stalwarts as we launch uh, into this journey uh, going forward thanks very much once again thank you thank you nitin jethan you heard uh, two stalwarts from the space industry and of course you know them uh, better than i do uh, you worked with them uh, you also interact with them regularly uh, what they said of course makes sense but as an academic as somebody who's uh, deeply involved in it and now that you're going to take up this platform's uh, editorship uh what do you think uh, needs to be done on interstellar.news as as we embark on this journey nitin ji firstly thank you for bringing me as the editor of interstellar.news uh this is a wonderful initiative and i'm not talking as an outsider but as an insider uh, as an academic who has been looking at the space sectors for the past 12 13 years and before that as a youngster who was enthusiastic about this field i can tell you that this is the most exciting phase of the indian space program ever uh this is where we unleash the the potential and the possibilities that lie untapped which were not used by isro earlier because of of course paucity of resources and whatever they could do but when you unleash it for the industry uh, there is a lot of creativity hidden uh, in the startups as well as in the industry and this creativity will have to be tapped and it will get tapped naturally because uh, the gates have been now opened by the government uh to add to that we we've, we've been only thinking about missions that were led by isro but hereafter we'll be looking at missions that are built by the industry and then coordinated by isro so uh, the skies are the limit the universe is the limit 
and interstellar.news will be covering this sort of news, uh, a lot of insights, a lot of insights on the politics of space, the governance related issues, the legal issues. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, in the space culture domain uh, about that performing arts, uh, your literary arts, science fiction, space fiction, uh, you name it, space science, technology, innovation, startups. There is a lot happening and this is a one-stop shop for everyone who wants insights, analysis and news about not only the Indian space sector but also the global space sector. I'm happy you were saying that. So uh, let's uh, tell the uh, audience uh, who's going to get on to our platform that uh, this is your platform. Uh, this is going to be uh, engaging with the audience uh, as much as possible. It's going to be interactive. It's going to be open to debates, discussions. It's going to be uh, some platform that uh, you will uh, like to come. Uh, express your opinions, give your views and also tell us what we can do. We will be sometimes covering uh, live events uh, of launches of the private sector getting into more and more space applications and India as, in, as it is, is is on the cusp of a big transformation uh, to become a 5 trillion economy uh, very soon and I think the space sector will play a major part in this. Defense is going to be one of the major applications. And with our two other pl platforms, BharatShakti.in and um, StratNewsGlobal.com, we hope to bring you a full bouquet of uh, India's uh, strategic options, uh, strategic policies, and uh, give you the full spectrum views, analysis, and commentary on all these three sectors, which are in some ways intertwined and interrelated. Thanks for watching. We will, uh, of course, uh, bring you more and more uh, interviews, exclusive interactions. In fact, uh, this evening, uh, you must watch out uh, for an interview with the uh, ISRO chairman, Dr. S. Somnath, which we both conducted in Bangalore uh, in, um, in, in his office, in his head office, the ISRO head office, uh, some days ago. And uh, that will give you a glimpse of what uh, ISRO is all about and what ISRO is thinking as far as the Indian space sector is con concerned. So welcome to interstellar.news once again. We hope to be engaging with you more and more. Thank you for watching.